Chapter Ten of the Science of Being Great by Wallace D. Wattles. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Idealization. You are a thinking center in original substance, and the thoughts of original substance have creative power. Whatever is formed in its thought and held as a thought form must come into existence as a visible and so-called material form, and the thought form held in thinking substance is a reality. It is a real thing, whether it has yet become visible to mortal eye or not. This is a fact that you should impress upon your understanding, that a thought held in thinking substance is a real thing, a form, and has actual existence, although it is not visible to you. You internally take the form in which you think of yourself, and you surround yourself with the invisible forms of those things with which you associate in your thoughts. If you desire a thing, Picture it clearly and hold the picture steadily in mind until it becomes a definite thought form. And if your practices are not such as to separate you from God, the thing you want will come to you in material form. It must do so in obedience to the law by which the universe was created. Make no thought form of yourself in connection with disease or sickness, but form a conception of health. Make a thought form of yourself as strong and hearty and perfectly well. Impress this thought form on creative intelligence, and if your practices are not in violation of the laws by which the physical body is built, your thought form will become manifest in your flesh. This also is certain. It comes by obedience to law. Make a thought form of yourself, as you desire to be, and set your ideal as near to perfection as your imagination is capable of forming the conception. Let me illustrate. If a young law student wishes to become great, let him picture himself, while attending to the viewpoint, consecration and identification as previously directed, as a great lawyer, pleading his case with matchless eloquence and power before the judge and jury, as having an unlimited command of truth, of knowledge and of wisdom. Let him picture himself as the great lawyer in every possible situation and contingency. While he is still only the student, in all circumstances let him never forget or fail to be the great lawyer in his thought-form of himself. As the thought-form grows more definite and habitual in his mind, the creative energies, both within and without, are set at work. He begins to manifest the form from within and all the essentials without, which go into the picture, begin to be impelled toward him. He makes himself into the image, and God works with him. Nothing can prevent him from becoming what he wishes to be. In the same general way, the musical student pictures himself as performing perfect harmonies, and as delighting vast audiences. The actor forms the highest conception he is capable of in regard to his art, and applies this conception to himself. The farmer and the mechanic do exactly the same thing. Fix upon your ideal of what you wish to make of yourself. Consider well, and be sure that you make the right choice that is, the one that will be the most satisfactory to you in a general way. Do not pay too much attention to the advice and suggestions of those around you. Do not believe that anyone can know, better than yourself, what is right for you. Listen to what others have to say, but always form your own conclusions. Do not let other people decide what you are to be. Be what you feel that you want to be. Do not be misled by a false notion of obligation or duty. You can owe no possible obligation or duty to others that should prevent you from making the most of yourself. Be true to yourself, and you cannot then be false to any man. When you have fully decided what thing you want to be, form the highest conception of that thing that you are capable of imagining, and make that conception a thought form. Hold that thought form as a fact, as the real truth about yourself, and believe in it. Close your ears to all adverse suggestions, Never mind if people call you a fool or a dreamer. Dream on. Remember that Bonaparte, the half-starred lieutenant, always saw himself as the general of armies and the master of France, and he became in outward realization what he held himself to be in mind. So likewise will you. Attend carefully to all that has been said in the preceding chapters, and act as directed in the following ones, and you will become what you want to be. End of chapter 10